When people talk sports, they throw out the term bust way too fast. For example, Jared Goff was considered a bust after starting only seven games his rookie year. All of a sudden, he gets a decent coach and he bounces back his second season. The basic definition of the word is a player who simply doesn't meet expectations. Some might even call Reggie Bush a bust. After being a top 5 pick and considered one of the greatest college football players of all time, he never lived up to the insane hype out of college. But if you look at his stats, he played mostly above average for many years putting up over 9,000 total yards and nearly a hundred touchdowns. At least he was still productive. Same goes for Darren McFadden, a top five pick with all the hype in the world to ultimately disappoint. He had over 7,500 total yards and held a reasonably important role in an offense for nearly a decade. Yes, by the bare bones definition of the term, these guys are busts. But imagine a guy who was once thought to be as good as both of these guys coming out of high school. A kid who was compared to LaDainian Tomlinson and named the best running back in the nation at the age of 16. Tomlinson. In 2007, the best running back in the NFL was LaDainian Tomlinson. Following his record-setting season in 2006 where he rushed for 28 touchdowns, that's a mark that I don't see getting beat anytime soon. He followed that up in 2007 with another spectacular year. Meanwhile, in Southern California, a star was in the making. Daryl Scott had put himself on the map his junior year after having some of the most insane stats. He rushed for over 3,000 yards and a total of 45 touchdowns. This unbelievable season put himself as the number one running back prospect in the nation by Rivals.com and ESPN. His success brought in over 50 scholarship offers around the country. Not only did every college want him, high schools were recruiting him as well. So his parents had decided that they wanted Daryl to play against tougher competition and attend one of the elite private schools in California. This actually pissed off coaches around the county and at the end of his senior season, he wasn't voted county player of the year. Even after rushing for nearly 2,500 yards and 34 touchdowns. To be honest, it didn't matter all that much though because the school that Daryl Scott ended up picking, St. Bonaventure, they got the ultimate prize and won the state title. After narrowing down all those scholarships to a few schools, Daryl's heavy favorite seemed to be Colorado, mostly since that's where his uncle played at the time. Since Jamal Charles announced that he was leaving for the NFL draft, he actually nearly committed to Texas. Daryl Scott had apparently given the Longhorns a private commitment, then backed out last second and ultimately committed to Colorado. This was huge news in Boulder, since he was the highest rated recruit to attend the school in nearly a decade. Things started hot. Daryl Scott's first career carry, six yard run, where he received a standing ovation from the hometown crowd. Later in the game, he dove across the goal line for his first career touchdown. The crowd roared. This sealed the game and was a great way to cap off his first big moment in what could be a legendary career. The school had some pretty special tailbacks back in the day. Eric Bieniemy, the star running back on Colorado's only national championship team in 1990. Rashawn Salam, who won the Heisman Trophy in 1994. And now, Daryl Scott was looking to put himself on this pedestal. After the game, running backs coach Darian Hagen had some words about his performance. Quote, I would probably say we saw 40%. He had a couple holes that he could have exploded through, but he didn't. The truth is, if that was 40% of what Daryl Scott was capable of, it's safe to say he never even reached 40% again. In fact, he never even scored another touchdown for Colorado. So after Colorado started off pretty well, things quickly unraveled, and Daryl Scott hardly saw the field. The following season, he openly complained to the Denver Post, saying that he wanted more carries after getting the ball only once in the season opener. This would eventually cause a rift between him and coaches, and after appearing in only five games his entire sophomore season, Daryl Scott was done. Where you, you know, Daryl came in and said, I'm leaving. I was, but I, I, you don't, I don't really have a comment about it, but I was. I found out uh, probably about 1.30, and then I didn't find out the way I thought I deserved to find out. How, how did you find that? Text message. 
Did he give you a reason why he wanted to do it at this time instead of waiting? I had no idea he was even thinking about it. You know, I've asked him on different occasions, you know, was he okay? Was he thinking about transferring because I heard people saying stuff? You know, I told him to be, be a man about it and look me in the eye. I said, no, coach, I never thought about it. Daryl Scott announced that he wanted to transfer to UCLA. The problem was they didn't even want him. So he desperately began an expedition around the country looking for anyone who would pick him up. That had to be humbling knowing that at some point UCLA had a scholarship for him, only to tell him that they weren't interested years later. He eventually found a home at the University of Southern Florida. After sitting out the required year that you lose when you transfer, Daryl Scott finally suited up to play for USF. In 2011, Scott split time in the backfield, and every once in a while, he would flash that five-star potential that he had. At this point now, the man was a bruiser. Since high school, he had put on a bit of weight, now over 230 pounds. He was a shell of what he once was, or was supposed to be as a player. He used to be quicker, better at avoiding tackles. Now, he was what you'd call a downhill runner. To be honest, the Ladanian Tomlinson comparison that he received couldn't be further from the truth. LT was much quicker, could move from side to side with ease, and was a critical part of the pass game. Daryl Scott was none of those, and it started with his speed. The dude was slow. His 40-yard dash was apparently around a 4.7, and ultimately was a huge disappointment. He still held out hope though. Not to be good at the college level, no, bigger than that. He still felt that he could play in the NFL. After that 2011 season, shockingly, Daryl Scott decided that he was going to give up the rest of his eligibility and enter the 2012 NFL Draft. This was beyond crazy considering the fact that he hadn't really accomplished much in college. And after being projected to go undrafted, that's exactly what happened. He did get a shot with the Dallas Cowboys, but never played a single down. He would eventually be cut after the 2012 season and never got another chance. So after his college career was all said and done, Daryl Scott was at best a mediocre college running back who had trouble staying on the field due to injury and just honestly not being good enough. A far cry from Ladanian Tomlinson. But to be fair, I mean, the man had a 400 yard game when he played at TCU. That was a third of all the yards that Daryl Scott ever recorded over his entire college career. It's tough to be compared to one of the all time greats because almost nobody will live up to that expectation. But who knows, there's one particular dude coming out of college this year who may have just what it takes. To Barkley, hurdles a man and makes a first down. What did you say before, Superman? <laughs> Come on! So if you like how I structure my videos and you've wanted to get into the creative side of things yourself, listen, I'm mostly self-taught and when I got stuck or couldn't figure something out, I would look it up online. The power of learning new skills like I did with basic editing is important to me and with Skillshare, you can learn to do just about anything. Skillshare has thousands of classes in design, business, technology, and more. For example, I was looking at a class in film production and I came across one about creative techniques on a budget. The introduction video for the class had me intrigued. Plus, the class had tremendously high ratings. By the way, a premium membership gives you unlimited access to high quality classes on all sorts of topics. It's great because it's much more affordable than most learning platforms out there. With an annual subscription, you're looking at only 10 bucks a month. The first 1,000 people to click on the link in the description will get their first two months of premium membership for only 99 cents. So for all you creators or creators to be, go ahead and check it out.